Several years ago, I bought my very first antique German grain sack, and I fell in love. It kind of developed into a little bit of an obsession for me. I'm excited to share the story of these grain sacks and then how I developed stencils from the antique designs to create my own special projects. I am really excited and those of you that have followed for a while know that I have collected these antique German grain sacks for many years. In fact, JR was a little bit shocked um, at how many I had. I have used these exclusively for upholstering um, custom pieces. My dad was an upholsterer and furniture maker many, many, many years ago for a, a local, a local furniture company. I had discovered upholstery <laughs> several years ago and I didn't even realize how much I loved it. Custom pieces with those beautiful grain sacks. And so I just have felt especially passionate about these three of my great-grandparents immigrated here from Germany. They were farm laborers, came to this country with nothing, and they worked on farms all over this area. Here, I'm gonna show you that all five of these stencils really did want a really nice basic design. This typography, this font can be used as backgrounds, layers, and so forth. This is one of the older ones that I have, 1842, and this is Albert Ruff. So, so the story of these beautiful grain sacks, each farm had their own set of grain sacks. They would get their grain or they would ship their grain. Then those sacks would be returned to their farm. So what we have is we have the name of the farmer and then the city or village or area where they lived and the date. This is George Mend in whatever name of this town is. Then the date, 1886. So this is kind of the next step up. And they would have had multiples of these. And believe it or not, what I found out from actually one of my German followers, there would be a stencil maker who went from village to village and he created a stencil for each farmer and they would be metal stencils. The I would use just these numbers on something. I would use just this little bit on something. I don't necessarily have to use the whole thing. This one's really special because believe it or not, I actually had two grain sacks from the same farm. I know that you. That's really cool. So this is almost the next level up where the, the bags, the sacks were numbered. These are not fonts that are easily found. These are antique fonts. In fact, my stencil maker actually had to render most of these fonts by hand. So this is the number of the sack, of the grain sack, number 12. But then you look here, farmer's name, house number 13. This had the added element of this beautiful oxen. So this one's a little bit bigger. It has a little more detail. And again, I would use sections of this even, even this guy on its own. All right, these are the cook lions. And I mean, how beautiful is this? I know that you. Um, this is just an old box. You could certainly build one as well. I don't necessarily need to use the entire image on here in order to create a really cool look. Working out of my lid here, and then I'm offloading. I wanna get most of that paint off my brush using a really light touch, because I want this to look a little worn and faded. I always am 
imagine, like, what would it be like if I found a leftover board or uh, just a scrap of fabric that was maybe left over somewhere that didn't have the entire image on it? Maybe it's just a little piece of a sign. So with this one stencil, I'm actually kind of creating um, a few different looks on each side of this box. I know that you feel all alone in this world, but you have to. This is a piece of a vintage flower sack. I love to stencil on fabric. I'll probably end up turning this into a pillow. What's best, what's best for you. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my wow. gosh. Really it truly exactly. makes me happy. This is just a this is a just a rustic old tray. I flipped it over and I've given it a quick dry brush of this is the vintage white. The stencils make beautiful background layers to put a wreath over top or other images with them. In fact, here I'm using the IOD Transfer Floral Anthology to create kind of a border around my piece. This is a canvas messenger bag. I mean, there you go. Isn't that awesome? It's that little touch of personality. Here I'm just stenciling random scraps of old linen, cotton, muslin, any kind of fabric scraps that I have. I'll show you how I'll put all of these together in one big project in another video. just wanted to add something a little extra to my little BB here very quickly. But I mean, just that little bit. How about that? See how you can use little bits of these. Using parts and segments of the stencils allows you to create some very interesting backgrounds, some additional dimension, and really awesome layers. This special curated collection of my green sack stencils can be used in so many ways. I'm really excited to begin to share some ideas that I have for projects. So watch for some upcoming videos here on YouTube and watch for a very special edition online workshop that you can be involved in too. When you purchase the plaques, you do get an email with a file that has all the links to the products that we use, a whole supply list. Many of them you probably already have. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we're going to go step by step how to create this awesome look. You can register now for this workshop at ellenjgoods.com and you can find all of our custom stencil designs at ellenjgoods.com or at our brick and mortar shop in Medina, New York. I'll add links below to that workshop and to each of the supplies I use today. And while you're here with us today, we'd love it if you would subscribe, 
like this video, and leave us a comment below to let us know what your ideas might be for using grain sack stencils.